Okay. Okay. This is a tippy stool, and I would like for you to sit on it. The purpose of this is for kids that are very hyper, hyperactive. Or that, you picked the right thing for that, honey. <laughs> <laughs> That's her kind of stuff. Sorry. I know you're not having fun recording. <laughs> So go one, two. One, two, mm -hmm. three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pieces in all. So these are the tools that we're gonna be using today. This is a, a, a glue gun with their glue stick, chopstick, a jigsaw. If you don't have this, you could use this. It's, this will you will find it in your kitchen. A T square and some sanding paper. This is the actual carver that we use. So is this length. So right here I pre-measured the size that we're gonna do our wall from, which is um, 11 and 3 quarters. Remember it's eight pieces to this equipment. So what I'm measuring is from the bottom to the top of the ends right here. Right now I'm going to use the jigsaw to cut, cut the pieces. So remember, the walls are four walls. One, two, three, and four. So now I'm going to use the jigsaw to cut my pieces off. Just make sure that the plate is sitting on the cardboard. Turn on your jigsaw. So now this is why we use the sandpaper. These fiber hairs, we just remove it. I'm taking this off. So the next step will be using your glue gun. Make sure you always have your glue stick next to you because once this finished, you have to make sure we put glue gun. So now. The way we're going to put this walls are, it's going to be one in and one out. So, place glue on your cardboard. Okay, this wall will be in. So as you see, this is the one that is out, this wall, and this wall is in, okay? So you give yourself at least five, five minutes. Five minutes. So then let's go back. So now, you see how the wall is connecting. So then this wall is in, this corner is out. This wall is in. So this is how it should look. And we're going to put glue on the top. So now this wall, this corner is out, and now we're putting this wall in. This wall is higher than this wall. You see? So now, in this one, we support, we should put glue in this wall, okay? but also in this wall. So, this will go right here and this will go right here. So, turn it around. 
them crazy. And just <laughs> in one little five minutes. This is the oil. The oil we use it for to do holes where we're gonna place our nails. But if you don't have this, use a pen and place your hole. Okay, so then this wall has his hole, this wall has his hole, and this wall has his hole, and this one. So our four, so what we do now is, well, do that we are in a workshop, I do have a bad saw. So usually what we do is when we cut the pieces coming on the machine, and we take our chopsticks, turn on the machine, and we cut our chapstick in size of four, four inches, so we can have our nails. You come to a sharpener, huh. and you sharpen your nail, so you can have the tip sharpened. Okay. I know you guys don't have a bandsaw, as you saw me um, cutting my pieces, but you do have a steak knife. So the trick is, you just place your steak, um, your steak, your your chopsticks. chopsticks on the table and just roll. So there we go. We got our little pieces, and then you go to your sharpener and you sharpen it, and then you'll get this. Sharpen it. It will turn to be. It all depends how sharply you want your right. your chopstick. So then, once you do that, you already play, did your holes. Use your Emma's glue in your hole. Make sure you have a lot there. So squeeze until you can no more. And just place your nail and hammer it down. Remember, at the end, the last hit. Make sure you hit it soft. So it always stays flush. Okay? So now we have one nail, two nail for our second wall, the third nail for our fourth wall, and the fourth nail for our last wall. So now everything is sturdy. Now our piece we measure and it's six and a half. So from here to here would be six and a half. It doesn't matter how wide and how big you want it. As long as you know your measurements, you're good. Okay. So six and a half, and then this wall should be six and a half, and then this wall would be six and a half. You grab your piece that you already double. So this is double. We glue, glue it together. Glue gun or Emma's glue, however you want it. If okay. you're working, you want to make a piece faster, then you use your glue gun. Okay. Okay, now, this is the easiest way to make sure that we have exactly what we need. You take your piece, then you're ready, your walls that you're ready to bed together. Take your pencil and just trace. So now we have our piece right here. We do take the jigsaw. And we start cutting. Remember? Then you grab your piece. Just decide that we traced it. And you place it right there. Put Emma's glue. Take your measurements again, which is six and a half. 
So you mark in your piece, your double piece, because it also has to be double. You have to make it the same size. And remember the corrugation going up and down. So um, it should be the corrugation going up and down. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's where it holds the strength. And when you sit on the piece, that's where the strength, the, the support will be hitting it. How we do this arc. Okay. So now we already cut our pieces six and a half. Okay, so the corrugation is going up and up and down. Mm -hmm. Right? So now what we do is that this is six and a half, the middle, the half of six and a half will be three and a quarter. Correct? Mm-hmm. So you divide this into two. You take the cover of your pan, which is the top, and then you take from the top of where you broke it down, and you just make that arc. Okay? The same thing goes here. Put it right there. And just trace. Okay, so now we have this. Now, you know that the thickness of the cardboard, one would be five baits, two I think it would be one fourth, one fourth thickness. You see how I had to go? Yeah. So the one fourth thickness. So you take another piece of cardboard that is double. Now, these arc goes together. As you can see, they come together. So what you do is from the bottom, which is the half of this would be three and a quarter, we said, right? You place your line there, so you know what is the middle. You place your double cover piece, and just do your little square. Hmm. Okay, so one is coming from the bottom, the other piece will be coming from the top. So, so I'm going to show you what I'm doing right now. So, half of this one and a half is five eighths. Mm -hmm. So I'm making sure that it's even, five eighths on one side and five eighths in the other. Okay? And this would be so this is how you trace it I already pre-cut it and I will show you now how it looks cut everything so like I said one comes from the top one comes from the bottom so right here I showed you one comes from the top which is this piece and this is the bottom I this is eyeballing it. Once you cut your piece and you try to put it, you have to see, you have to make sure that it sits flush. So right now I don't know, you know, with this trace, if it would sit flush. You continue cutting until it hits, it shows that it's flush. Huh. So normally you would not know until you cut your pieces and try it out and try it huh. out until you make okay. sure it's there. Okay, so you grab your steak knife, come to the end of the table, and just cut. It's gonna be hard, but you could do it. It could be done, okay? So this is with the steak knife. Now, I'm cutting this piece right here. This is right there. And voila. I already pre-cut it. So now I'm taking the fiber here that comes out from the cardboard. Always make sure that every time you cut, you use your sandpaper to take the fiber hair off. Because then once you 
when you're about to edge it, that, that will be another step that I'll show you. Um, it will be very hard for you to edge. Okay, so now you put your pieces together, which is flush, as you can see. Then you bring back your piece that you made already, which is your walls and your bottom, and place the arc here. You're gonna trace. So this is where this is gonna go. Okay. Yep. So now with your box cutter, what you're gonna do is cut the lines that you traced it, which we we're gonna be removing two layers of your carpet. You take exactly the all mm -hmm. that will help you lift up. You can also use your nails. I got nails as well. <laughs> So this is the way you remove one layer, and the reason why it's for that, so it, this is the way it should look. Mm -hmm. You gotta make sure, there we go. No. That there looks good, go. yeah. You yeah. gotta make sure you find where you trace. Right on. <laughs> Normally what I will do is I will put a number one here and then number one here so uh, I can know yeah, that's clever. where it goes. Right. As on. you saw that I was having kind of a little bit of trouble. Yeah. You put enough glue. And now we place it. And then we let it sit there. So now, so now we turn it around. We turn it around. So what we're missing is our round piece. We use, we letting it there sit so it could dry up. We use the cover of the pan. So however wide you want your chair, your sitting position, this is the way you do it. Do it. It all depends on the person's. Wait, right. Oh, um, I could sit on this and I'm kind of heavy. I could sit on this and I'm perfectly fine. Hmm. I also made a chair for my son because he's ADHD, hyperactive mm -hmm. disorder, and um, it worked perfectly. Um, now he doesn't get up when he plays PlayStation. He's playing, actually sitting down his tippy stool. Now the tippy stool is wandering around. <laughs> um, your sugar holder, however, how big is it that you want your whole, um, your round circle where they're gonna sit at? So I want it a little bit bigger. As you can see, it's not so big, but you could use that if you don't wanna use it for a little kid. So what I did here was I traced, I took my double cardboard, from the circle, we're gonna remove two layers. Gotcha. Okay, so I traced it. This is my circle. Mm -hmm. Remember how we traced the bottom piece? Mm -hmm. The same thing we're gonna do here. Just make sure it's in the center of your piece. Have enough room for this side, this side, this, and this. Okay, mm -hmm. so now we're going to cut it with our jigsaw. Yeah. But you can also have, uh, take your box cutter and just continue tracing your cuts until you reach the box. Now that I did my lining with the box cutter, you can use your steak knife and it will be much easier to cut. basically the same thing. So now we cut it. Now 
remember like I told you put your piece there make sure everything is even trace trace now we use our box cutter because remember we're gonna remove two layers one layer if I put to look that's a layer if you see it's kind of hard take again your box cut and just make sure so it could be easier for you So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my holes in each wall right here because once I glue it I'm not gonna know then I have to go through measurements so the easy way out is I just place my hole that will go all the way to the other side so now I take my glue gun I'm putting a lot of glue. We're not putting glue in the middle because the middle is open. We really gotta worry about the corners. So now we place our piece. Uh oh, we did the same thing. Then we turn it. I open my holes that I already made so I know where. My nails are gonna go. Make sure. Okay. My nails. Hammer. And voila. Voila. Always make sure you put your paper on your open pieces, not on your closed pieces, okay? Wherever you have a tunnel open, where you see the tunnels, your corrugation, you should close it with paper. Right. Living in New York City, there's a lot of roaches. We got our tippy store. Now, I would get any yoga mat or any little cushion that you have, you could put it there. If you want it like that, then you could keep it like that. But I recommend that you put some yoga mat so your butt don't hurt. <laughs> wow, it's sitting in there. Remember, always remember, each fluid holds 1,300 pounds. So she's gonna sit on the one that we finished making. Nice. <laughs> 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 it's a 